All right, should be recording. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, so we'll get started. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ian, and I'm one of the founders of Timepiece, which is an intergalactic watch company designed to help people change their perception of time so they can stop worrying and start being. And today I will be interviewing Lana Sackwild, who is a lucid dreaming coach. And she will be doing a lucid dreaming retreat with our friend David J. Brown in April. So Lana, I'll let you uh, introduce yourself and then we can uh, get into the questions. Well, yeah, thank you for having me. And um, as you said, my name's Lana and I am a lucid dreaming and uh, lucid living transpersonal life coach. Um, and yeah, I'll be hosting the Dreaming Wide Awake retreat with David J. Brown. Um, and also producing or finishing up my research project this year, which is on the uh, transformative and healing powers of lucid dreaming for mitigating depression. Very cool. Okay, so let's start this interview. Uh, question number one, should lucid dreaming be taught in elementary schools? Yeah, um, I think this is a really interesting question and um, I absolutely think it should be taught in elementary schools as um, one of the main difficulties with adults uh, learning to lucid dream is that we have such um, limiting belief systems, I guess, embedded into us from growing up and being told what we can do, what we can't do um, from the people around us in our environments, whereas children don't have these kind of limiting beliefs and so uh, as a child it's a great time to start the practice. Yeah and do you think that um, I'm, I'm curious how it could uh, help them like for example if a child it needs help with their math homework and they are in a lucid dream and they uh, suddenly want uh, to Albert Einstein to appear to help them with their math homework do you think that's something that is a possibility? Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely using uh, dream characters and like uh, exactly what you said, like practicing something, practicing a skill. Um, and even beyond that, like I used lucid dreams whilst I was a child to help me with things like nightmares and kind of empowering myself. Um, and then other like random tasks, like learning to ride a bike better, those kind of things that sometimes you might struggle with as a as a kid. Yeah, I, I do. Th I also agree with you. I think it would be really interesting if lucid dreaming was taught at a young age, mm -hmm. uh, and especially in school. Okay, let's move on. Um, so, tell us one of the coolest things that you've done in a lucid dream, or you could just tell us about a very memorable lucid dream that you've had. Um. Yeah, I wanted to tell you about one of my recent dreams that I thought was really cool. Um, and I haven't actually shared this online before. So uh, it stemmed from this idea that I had at the uh, International Association for the Studies of Dreams Conference, or the IASD, um, where they do a bunch of different workshops. And um, I decided I wanted to go to a workshop that I thought sounded like the worst one. Um, and it was a workshop on uh, tarot and it was kind of like mystical. Um, and after going to that, I actually thought that it was, it was my favorite one there. Um, and so this really opened up my mind to working with different types of people that maybe I wouldn't have worked with previously. Uh, I worked with a friend who does a lot of crystal and energy work. And we did a lucid dream session and her um, lucid dream task that we set up together was uh, announcing to the dream or a character, like I'm ready to receive my crystal now. Um, and I thought that was kind of cool. And so that night I got lucid and I decided I wanted to try her task and I, don't do any work with crystals myself. Um, so I found this kind of group of conscious children, which is one of my really regular dream signs. I know that's one of David's as well. Um, and I, I said to them, I'm ready to receive my crystals now. And all of these kids, those three kids, they each gave me kind of 
um, these really beautiful crystal earrings, which I wasn't expecting at all. And there were different crystals on them, um, different colors and different styles. And when I woke up, that um, image was so strong with me and kind of in one of those weird synchronicity things, I went online and this um, jewelry shop popped up that does customized jewelry. So mm -hmm. I ended up contacting this woman and she actually recreated these earrings for me and I wear them all the time when I feel like I need a bit of a like energetic or something like that. So I thought it was a kind of cool one because it really integrated well into my life. Yeah, that's amazing. Whenever uh, things from the lucid world come into your waking life, it's always pretty interesting. Yeah. How about you? Um, you had an interesting one recently? Uh, interesting lucid dream recently. Um, I was able to speak with a friend who had passed away a long time ago, and mm -hmm. that's always really fascinating when you can when you can do that because obviously in real life you don't have any chance to speak to them anymore, but in the dream world you do. So that was pretty special. Yeah. Um, but one one of the coolest things I think uh, I've done in a lucid dream I think is. Uh, Meeting my dream guide, I think that's a really uh, f like fascinating uh, idea. The fact that we all have a dream guide, mm. and if you can if you contact them in the lucid world, then they might appear for you. And then for me, at least, every time I did try to contact him, the same guide showed up. I love that. And, yeah, one of the most amazing things was one time I was lucid in a dream. I think I was in a city like New York City, and uh, I called upon my dream guide. And all of a sudden, a silver minivan pulled up and the door opened and it was my, my dream guide was inside and he told me to get in the car. And when I got in, his whole family was in the car. So oh it, was his, it was his parents and his sister. And I was just like blown away, like, wow, I'm, I'm in a dream and I'm meeting my dream guide's family. So that was pretty incredible. Yeah, I love that. What did yeah. you do? How did you end up meeting your dream guide in the first place? Was it just calling out to them or was it a particular situation? Yeah, I remember, I think I was in, in a bathroom uh, and I, I said something like, I want, I want my dream guide to appear. Somehow I was calling out for him. And then I think I turned around or he came through the door. It was a really long time ago, but it was just like this 10 year old kid. And he told me that his name was Harry Potter Tigger and he was wearing a cape and he had blonde hair. And uh, every time after that that I called upon him she showed up so it was pretty cool <laughs> yeah yeah it's I think it's one of the coolest things that you can do as like a task or if you're just wanting to explore something is is asking for your guide and uh, I know for some people they kind of seem to develop and change as they develop and change themselves and for other people it's like the same person every single time and it's really interesting yeah, the cool thing about like lucid dreaming is there's no really limit. It's all about your own imagination and what you can create. Mm -hmm. So if you're having trouble like achieving a task, if you can't do it, maybe your dream guide can help you. So that's just like an imaginative way to accomplish your goals in a lucid dream. Yeah, yeah. Because in a way, that's what they're there to do. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about the lucid dreaming retreat that you're doing with David J. Brown. And why do you think someone should want to come to it? Yeah, so um, the retreat we're doing is called Dreaming Wide Awake. Um, and it's like a three-day, two-night um, lucid dreaming retreat. And we're kind of breaking each day down into different sections. So um, I guess like you'd say the, the first uh, section is kind of all about um, investigation and investigating what your blockages are, whether they're, you know, spiritual, emotional, um, physical even, or looking at what your life purpose is, what the meaning of all this is. And I think uh, that's a really important question to ask yourself when you get into lucid dreaming, because, um, you know, we don't have boundaries in lucid dreams that we have in the waking state. So when you enter the lucid dream space, it's really important to know, like, what do I want to do here? And what do I want to do in my life if I don't have um, boundaries that, you know, you may have in the waking state, like financial boundaries or um, issues traveling or being stuck in a human body, all of that stuff. So it's a really interesting way to start off thinking about 
uh, what what is your purpose? What's your goals? You know, what's the meaning of all this? Um, mm -hmm. And then the second day we move more into kind of implementation. Um, so me and David will be teaching a lot of different tried and tested techniques so that people can really experience um, a transformation essentially overnight, you know. Um, I think it's a huge issue nowadays with people being stuck on medications or going to therapy for like 10, 20 years um, and just covering a band-aid essentially over, um, you know, these things rather than getting really to the origin um, or core issue of something. Um, not that it necessarily has to be a negative thing. It can be the core issue of, you know, music, art, sports, relationships, really limitless. So it'll be a lot of techniques and workshops. And then the third day we touch on um, integration, like how you integrate these experiences back into your waking life, how you start living lucidly, not just at the retreat, but also after the retreat. Because at the end of the day, this is a, a real gift that we want to share with people and we genuinely believe it can transform lives. Um, so we also want to, you know, create a kind of community there, like a mastermind community, um, connect with each other, be in a space to share all these things. Uh, so I guess if any of that at all is resonating with people, then they are definitely someone who should check out more about the retreat, which they can do through um, my website, which is my name, lanasakwa.com, and then slash dreaming wide awake to get to the retreat page. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I've always wanted to go to a lucid dreaming retreat. How did you actually find David? Um, that's, that's really funny, actually. David, uh, he advertised just on Instagram or Facebook or something that he was giving away signed copies of some of his books. Um, I think it was maybe Mavericks of the Mind or it might have been the uh, Science of Psychedelics. And obviously, I, I have a lot of his books. I really love his work. Um, and I just messaged him asking, how about Dreaming Wide Awake, his book Dreaming Wide Awake, which is obviously one of my favorites. And then I guess he just checks out my page and what I do and our connection bloomed from there. That's cool. David is also a friend of ours and it was actually his book, uh, Mavericks of the Mind, that was one of the biggest influences in starting Timepiece. And we actually did an interview with him and then he actually used it in, a, I think it was in his book, uh, The New Science of Psychedelics. Mm -hmm. So now, now it's interesting that we're interviewing you in a different fashion. <laughs> yeah, um, and speaking, yeah the, the connections. And now speaking of, I guess, a, a, maybe a slight synchronicity, I wanted to ask you, um, how does synchronicity play a role in your life? Um, it, it plays a role in a bunch of different ways. Something that has been coming up for me really recently actually it's happened over the last kind of three days is things will just start popping up sometimes names of things sometimes um images of things but uh i don't maybe yeah i'm gonna bring this up because it might resonate with you or anyone listening to this but the last couple of days i've been having this um constant pop-up with the name odin and uh by that i mean you know it'll be like uh, someone mentioned it the other day or saw it pop up a couple of times. I then watched the uh, Aaron Hernandez documentary and the person he murders is called Odin. Later on, I just had the TV on in the background. It was some interior design thing while I was knitting and the interior designer was called Odin. And then later that night, I was reading um, this book, The American Gods, and they start talking about the history of this god called Odin. It's like a Norse god. Mm. And so I have those kind of weird synchronicities happen all the time. Um, and then usually, yeah, I want to work them into the lucid state to kind of ask, like, what am I being shown right now? Or like, what does this mean to me? Yeah, so the next time you get lucid, you might want to try to meet this Odin figure and who knows what he's going to tell you. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. How about you? I know you have a bunch of different synchronicities happen in your life. Um, I find that the more mystical state of consciousness it, 
state of consciousness that I'm in, the more synchronicity plays a role. Mm -hmm. And when, I, when I've been in like a really mystical state of consciousness, then the universe like speaks to me through synchronicity and I can see it everywhere. And kind of my entire reality is based on synchronicity and metaphor, which yeah. can be really magical, but also kind of overwhelming at times. Mm -hmm. um, so it definitely plays a big role in my life as well. Yeah. Um, Do you have anything that came up for you recently? Um, hmm. Not really off the top of my head mm -hmm. um, that I can think of. Um, yeah, it's weird. They kind of fade in and out. Um, some of the time I'll go without anything happening. And then other times it'll be like this week where things just like keep popping up again and again. And usually for me, if something happens like more than three times in a row, I'm like, okay, the universe trying to tell me something right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really interesting question that I've been wanting to ask you for a little while um, because it's something that I wonder about or have experienced or thought about, but have you ever felt like you were being tested in the dream world by higher dimensional beings? Yeah. Um, I had a bunch of really uh, weird wizard dreams a lot in a row um, where there were these, yeah, I, I, I don't know if they're necessarily wizards or kind of entities, but very powerful, magical entities, I guess, that have, you know, um, forces that we don't have in our waking life. So things like they would be able to do things like um, stop me from moving, stop me from controlling the dream or stop me from using any kind of powers. Um, and for a long time, I was very scared of them and I didn't really know why they were there and why this was happening they would come up in sleep paralysis as well um and then essentially i kept trying to fight against them and i felt like it was this kind of test where eventually i would become powerful enough to defeat them you know um but this was just not working and actually the more i tried to fight against them the less powerful i felt um and so one night i I decided to just like just let them win or whatever and see like I don't know maybe I have to go through some kind of death or whatever it is um, and when I stopped fighting against them I actually felt like some form of compassion for them and this kind of feeling came up of like what's the point in me fighting these people I don't even know what we're fighting for and um, I actually feel like sorry for them that they're you know using their power against me or that kind of stuff and that's when everything shifted and when i started flowing with the dream instead of fighting against it these people or entities um shifted and they stopped using their power and i started regaining power so i think that was like a i felt like that was a pivotal moment or kind of test in my lucid dream work where I learned to work more with the flow state and that is not entirely about me controlling the dream and me setting out everything and more of a kind of two-way mechanism with me controlling part of the dream and the dream also controlling part of the dream if that makes sense. That sounds pretty interesting and intense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, this question might be a little abstract or a little strange or whatever but do you think is there any purpose for all this and when I say this I mean the universe life and what is it hmm. yeah um I guess for me uh, I I thought about this a lot um you know over the new year and I felt like for me the purpose is just connection and mm -hmm. relationship and I think um that's one of the only things that we really take with us throughout our whole lives is the different connections we have to other people and I think it's such an important thing not just between people but you know species and plants and the way that we're networking and the internet and all of this going on seems to be a deepening of connection to self and other and I guess through doing this work it's something that's come up as well as you know one of the only things that we take between worlds and through death and um, all of that is just the, the connections we have 
What do you think? Yeah. So, so you would say like relationships really are kind of the meaning. Um, I don't know. For me, I, I read Tom Campbell's My Big Theory of Everything, and he talks a lot about experience and love is the the purpose of everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Alan Watts says like the purpose of life is just to live. Yeah. And for me, for me, I don't know. It's something I think about, and I'd like to think of that the universe, the purpose of the universe, is some sort of like cosmic love. Mm-hmm. And that's the purpose and the meaning behind everything. Yeah. Um, David J. Brown had a pretty interesting answer oh, yeah. uh, when I asked him about it. Um, something about like the purpose is for the the inner, the outer world to eventually match the inner world, mm. uh, something like that. But we would we would have to look back at the interview. Yeah. But um, yeah, for me, I don't really know. I'd rather not even ans- answer the question. <laughs> I'd rather ask you the question. But um. Uh, the next question is, and this is also something very interesting. Do you think that there's any independent reality to the dream figures that you meet in your dreams? Or do you see them more as a manifestation of yourself? Yeah, this is a weird one. Um, and one that I, I actually, I changed my mind on it all the time. Um, yeah. Up until maybe last year, I, I was very strongly and, you know, firmly believing that dream characters are just different segments of ourselves or different parts of our psyche kind of like what we use in you know the internal family systems coaching method and that and that you're just trying to connect and reintegrate uh, parts of the self but um, actually very similar to you I started having dreams where I was um, connecting with uh, deceased people or you know deceased family members friends um people who had passed and these a lot of these characters seem to have consciousness uh that is not of my own i'm not in control of them they're not um you know regurgitating my thoughts or anything like that they won't do things that i want them to do um and they seem to just have their own agenda and that really confused my um, belief system entirely. I am mm-hmm. not really sure what to think about them anymore. I'm sure you've had your own experience with these kind of conscious beings as well, right? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly, it's hard to believe that they have their own independent realities, but then at the same time, it certainly seems that way when you're communicating with them. So I don't know, I, I would think the answer is maybe a combination somehow of both. Mm-hmm. that they might be aspect of yourself but they also might be other dimensional beings that do have their own independent reality i'm yeah. not sure this you know this is a, that's a really interesting thing to think about yeah i i know that um you know i kind of refer to them the regular characters as like puppets and i think they are uh parts of ourselves and you know they'll do things like when you're thinking about something they'll say it or they can see something that you can see if they're not facing that way so they do seem to be connected to um, the, the individual dream character. But yeah, these kind of conscious beings and entities um, that appear and they seem to know knowledge that even, you know, you might not know yourself. Um, these kind of things are, it gets into a bit of a gray area. And if anything's come up this work, it's like, you know, I I don't set limits on anything anymore. So yeah, yeah, I'm open to them being their own form of consciousness. Uh, Certainly when I've conversed with them and talked to them, they, I think they will tell me that they are, that they do have their own reality and sort of look at you like, what do you mean? How could I not have my own reality? Yeah. Yeah. I've had people tell me that I've been like, this is, you know, my lucid dream. And they've just been like, no, this is my dream. And like a full on argument with them almost. So I don't know. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, fill in the blank. Psychedelics have the power to blank. Heal, I would yeah. say. Yeah, that, that seems to be the new, well, it's not new, but the reality that's now, you know, coming into our reality with all this um, new work and research on the healing powers that they contain. What would yeah. you say? Um, I would. I don't know if uh, the universe needs to be saved, but I would say the psychedelics have the power to save the universe or maybe heal 
a person or heal the planet. So obviously they have tremendous potential. Yeah, I think it's such a shame that, you know, it's taken this long for us to be allowed to to use them for healing again, um, you know, on a, on a wider scale with, you know, these tests for you know, MDMA for PTSD or uh, like Ivan for kind of different traumatic treatments and relationship building. Um, but I'm glad it's finally here and finally happening and it's definitely uh, going to help us progress consciously in the future. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you believe that all people have equal potential to lucid dream or only those with higher consciousness? No, I think um, anyone who wants uh, to get into lucid dreaming can do it. And uh, actually, like, I think 20% of people in general or something around there will have a spontaneous lucid dream at least once in their life. Um, and then I think it's like 50% or something of people, the general population will have a spontaneous lucid dream like once a month. So it's definitely happening for a lot of people. And um, I think anyone who wants to can, can do it. Yeah, I tend to agree. And I think that uh, lucid dreaming is really just about awareness. So mm -hmm. as long as you can implement awareness, because when you get lucid, you're just becoming aware that you're dreaming. So you should always reality check. And I'll pinch myself right now just to make sure I'm not dreaming right now. Yep, I'm awake. Okay. Um, do you think that lucid dreaming could be used as a type of meditation for people who are struggling with mental illness? I don't uh, necessarily think a uh, meditation um, immediately, but I think at a later stage, possibly a more spiritual or meditation based approach could be used um, from the the research that I do on depression, it seems like people seem to work with lucid dreaming going through four stages. Um, the first being more around uh, um, self-exploration. Um, and then once they've kind of explored the self a bit more, they start getting more creative, more empowered. And, and then the final stage seems to be a kind of transpersonal, spiritual, um, exploration so maybe in the later stages it's something that comes out of it but uh, definitely in early stages with mental illness is very um, there's a very fine line between uh, what people should use it for mm -hmm. okay um, do you think that a think tank can be created for solving real world problems in lucid dreams yeah um, Absolutely. And I know that there's already been a lot of real world problem solving uh, going on from lucid dream work. Um, there's a lot of famous examples in, in the science fields, like um, solving how to arrange the periodic table of elements or uh, how to look at different atomic structures, um, even using some, like creating some medicines. I know uh, there's something to do with how uh, sugars and insulin medications work. So I think that it would be a great tool to use as a real world kind of think tank. And it's a real shame that it's not being used right now, actually. Yeah, I've always uh, imagined like a network of ideas between like really intelligent people that were meeting up somehow in lucid dreams and coming up with like, solutions mm -hmm. um, um have you ever become an animal in a lucid dream yeah um i love actually changing form in lucid dream both like interspecies and different genders and all that stuff um one of the weird ones i experienced recently was becoming a bat um and i had this lucid dream where i was in this swarm of bats and i was very aware that I was suddenly a bat and I remember feeling like the leathery kind of wing stuff um, and it actually felt really uncomfortable. I didn't feel comfortable being a bat at all and I remember feeling like this kind of imposter and the bats were practicing this kind of swooping method in the cave um, and I remember like thinking I need to join in with this but yeah, feeling like an imposter, I guess, and 
um, having really bad eyesight and all that stuff that goes along with being a bat. So that was a weird one. But one of my favorite uh, animal ones is just being like a, a really big cat and like running fast and that kind of stuff. Have you tried any animal dreams yourself, Ian? Yeah, just once I became a dolphin and I just remember being like mesmerized exploring the ocean and it was just in, it was just really psychedelic yeah. and all the colors I was seeing were just absolutely stunning I and I was just seeing all the I was just seeing all these kinds of trippy fish and weird psychedelic creatures <laughs> it was pretty cool but I haven't explored that uh, enough yeah yeah uh, that's cool if you're um, some kind of fish because you get to experience that like underwater yeah life yeah um, do you believe that people can be physically healed through lucid dreaming? Yeah, I do. Um, I think there is so many accounts of uh, physical healing through lucid dreams. Like with a quick Google search, there's so many people. Um, and I've had one of my own experiences. Luckily, uh, you know, I, I usually don't have any physical problems. But um, I had a dream last year, a lucid dream, where uh, I was supposed to be conducting interviews and a couple of days before I started conducting all these interviews for my research, I lost my voice and like my voice was fully gone hundred percent. This had never happened to me before. Um, and I, I couldn't talk, I couldn't do anything. And so I decided to get lucid uh, that night and I had this, this epic dream it was really long, but and part of it, I was at a bar and I would go up to the barman and I asked him um, if he had anything to help me with my voice. And I told him the situation in my waking life. And, you know, he just kind of looked at me like, oh, yeah, I've got the exact thing for you. Went rummaging around under the bar and brings up this um, huge like glass bottle container. And he's like, just drink this. And I was drinking it. And it was basically the ingredients that you would use like for an omelet or something. Like it was a bunch of eggs and different like spinach and mushrooms and peppers and all this stuff. Um, and I drank it. And I remember feeling that like, you know, very liquidy, solid feeling going down my throat. Um, and I moved on with the lucid dream. But when I woke up, my voice was like 100%. Is completely fine and I know no one can necessarily link those two things but I think when you have a personal experience and I know what my voice was like and how much my throat hurt and then just waking up from that and it being fine um, I was like that has to have something to do with it yeah I mean it worked for you uh, and then in, in Robert Wagner's book lucid dreaming gateway to the inner self he talks a lot about healing in that book and uh, I've experimented a little bit with my a little bit myself whenever I've had like a family member that got sick somehow or a friend. Uh, the next time I got lucid, I would find them or I would imagine them and I would shoot like white, white healing light from my hands and imagine that it was going to them. And they've all been fine. Not to say that I've done anything, but it, it, it's possible. You never know. Yeah, I definitely um, so, believe in that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another really interesting aspect of lucid dreaming because it might have the ability to heal people. Yeah, it's um, worth giving it a try. Hey, I'm not going to lose yeah, anything. Exactly. Um, is, is there any part of the brain that controls the, function of, the functioning of lucid dreaming? Does lucid dreaming have any reported health benefits or effects on the body if occasionally done? Yeah, um, I think a lot of articles have found that it's the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is like one of the main um, areas of the brain that turns on in lucid dreaming and is essentially just um, deactivated in a regular dream state. And I guess that part, that part of the brain kind of plays a role in um, our cognitive capabilities or like decision making and kind of self-reflection or self-assessment, um, those kind of things. And um, I don't, I'm, I'm not a neuroscientist, so I don't know like the ins and outs of it, but there's a great, um, article for those who are really interested in the different parts of the brain and kind of know the science of that called, um, the neural correlates of dream lucidity. 
obtained from contrasting lucid dreams versus non-lucid dreams. I think that's the title. Um, something like that, but they go really in depth on the exact parts of the brain that are um, essentially online whilst lucid and the parts that are online during REM sleep or non-REM sleep. Um, and that's really interesting. Um, and then to answer the rest of your question, uh, I guess I'd say that, um, you know, the main health benefits in a physical way are, are those things like creating a higher state of awareness, um, increasing metacognition, um, you know, cognitive intelligence and problem solving techniques. Um, and also that lucid dreaming really helps with things like PTSD, PTSD, trauma, nightmares, um, and all those things do affect us physically. Yeah. So I would say that those are the, you know, huge health benefits that can be changed through lucid dreaming. Yeah, and I would say that anytime I've had like an amazing lucid dream, I always wake up feeling better than usual. So that might be a health benefit in, in itself. Yeah, um, I know, um, a lot of people as well seem to have this idea that lucid dreams means that you're not getting enough sleep. But I've read in quite a lot of places that the lucid dream state is actually a kind of deeper uh, way right. of sleep. So yeah, you should actually be getting a better rest and waking up feeling more rejuvenated for sure. Right. Um, if you realized that you were lucid right now, what would you do? <laughs> um, I mean, I would definitely be asking about this Odin uh, situation, that's for sure. Um, another thing that is on my list is um, I always ask to see my higher self, kind of like what you do with the dream guide. I always ask my higher self or my dream guide. Um, what I need to see right now or what I need to be shown. Um, and another practice that I'm really interested in, I don't know if you do work in this, but I'd like to use lucid dreaming in combination with remote viewing. So maybe trying to um, see something or an item in someone's house or something where they could, I could see it and then check in with them if that was actually true or not does that make sense yeah i've done some experiments with that as well oh yeah um, a little bit yeah um okay uh so we're getting down to the end um my question is about athletes and artists and lucid dreaming do you believe that people can become better at sports or art through practicing in lucid dreams and are there any artists or athletes throughout history that you believe were avid lucid dreamers yeah, a hundred percent. My research supervisor, uh, Tata Stumbries, he um, he's done a lot of studies on you know sports science and how uh, you can get better at a sport or physical training through the lucid dream state. Um, he has a bunch of articles on that that are really interesting, um, and that definitely crosses the line with art with music. I think. Some of the, I know Salvador Dali, he was inspired, um, his paintings were inspired by lucid dreams and one of the famous uh, musical features I know is the song Yesterday by uh, Paul McCartney or the Beatles. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think there's a bunch of different accounts where, uh, throughout history with people being guided by dream work. Um, and also to this day as well, I know a lot of different artists and musicians that uh, take, um, you know, creative inspiration from their lucid dreams. Right. Uh, here's a bonus question. If you were in a lucid dream and you were going to a concert, who, what, what would be the band? Who would make up the band that you would want to see in this lucid dream world? <laughs> um, I had a dream recently that I saw uh deftones do you know the band deftones uh i don't I've, i don't really listen to them i don't know uh, um yeah i've never seen them in real life but they came up in my dream at just a regular dream and i was having an awesome time and i wondered why they came up um because i haven't listened to them since you know it's probably like 15 or 16 or that kind of thing but um it was really nostalgic and i remembered you know how much i loved that music and i kind of listened to it 
again, like listen to the old albums and I really felt that thing of like, oh, I wish I had seen them. So I guess it would be Deftones for me. How about you? Um, I think I would like to see a concert with uh, George Harrison, John Lennon, oh, wow. Bob, Mar Bob Marley and David Bowie. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a much more epic combination. <laughs> I think I think that would be fun. Okay, um, is there anything you want to tell us before you go? Um, please get in contact with me. As I mentioned, like I love connection and I think this is already such a small community, you know, the lucid dreaming community. So um, I love connecting with other lucid dreamers. Um, and yeah, please, if you found this interesting, share it, keep spreading the magic, keep spreading uh, the, the joy of lucid dreaming. Um, I, I don't think I'm like ahead of anyone or on a pedestal or anything. I think, you know, this kind of field is, is so small that it is really important to share um, our lucid dreams and uh, your lucid dream story might change the life of someone else. So um, it can be really healing and yeah, keep living lucidly. Okay, I just wanna thank you for doing this interview with us. Um, I think some people will probably find it fascinating. And if you are interested in learning to get lucid, I suggest um, checking out Lana and David's retreat. Um, go to lanasackwild.com. Check out timepiece.com for a cool timepiece. And uh, have, a, have good dreams tonight. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ian. Bye, Lana.